Hey everybody, my name is Mitchell Pearson and today we're going to be taking a look at role playing tables and how they work in conjunction with calculation groups to make this so much better. So we're really going to discuss probably three different things. One, what are role playing tables? What am I talking about here? Two, what are the two traditional ways that we've handled this in the past? And three, how can we use calculation groups to make this so much better, so much easier to implement? This is awesome. This is crazy. We're going to jump right in and take a look. First of all, what are role playing tables? Well, that's an old terminology from data modeling, right? From dimensional modeling. What a role playing table means is that you have a single table and you want it to play multiple roles, kind of like Eddie Murphy and the Nutty Professor. So you have a table and you want that date table to play the date, the shipping role, and the due date role, right? So for example, you have a transaction table and in your transaction table, you always track when a transaction occurred, what was the order date, when did it ship, and when was it due? And certain people within an organization, maybe most, want to see all of your sales and your cost and your profit. They want to see that based on the order date. When did that transaction take place? But there's going to be a subset that probably wants to see it based on the shipping date. And so you build your entire data model, maybe 50 calculated measures, maybe 100 calculated measures, and all of those measures work like all other measures based on the active relationship in your data model. So like on the screen right here, we have an order date table and you can see that the relationship is based on the order date. The date table filters down the table on the order date. And so all of your measures work on that by default. Then another user comes to you and says, hey, we want to see this by the shipping date. And you're like, okay, well, I have two options, right? The first option and probably the most common today in Power BI is to import the table another time. Now with the date table, not a big deal because a date table normally only has a couple of thousand rows in it. But if this were like a, a role playing table with like a customer that might have hundreds of thousands or millions of rows for a bill to and a ship to address, that becomes much more problematic because it's going to take up a lot more space in our data model. So in this situation, we bring the date table in again and we build the relationship where the date table filters down the ship date. The benefit of this, the pro, is that you don't have to rewrite all of your DAX calculations. So total sales works with the one table or the other table. The same measure works with both tables based on the active relationship. So let's take a look real quick at kind of the first method. We'll take a look at the second method. Then I'm going to show you the awesomeness of calculation groups. So if we jump back over to the report view, we see a table here that's very simple. I have total sales and I have profit. And then we have it is being sliced by the year. Now the year that it's being sliced by, if we come over here and look to the right, is coming from our order date table. And therefore that means that my sales and my profit are based on the order in which that transaction occurred. But if I duplicate this table, let's duplicate it real quick so we can look at this side by side. And then we'll make this one just a little bit smaller here and then this one as well and slide them up side by side. This other table, I'm going to show you how by simply bringing in the year from your ship date table, you can see the total sales based on the date that it shipped, the total transactions, the profit, the profit margin, so on and so forth. So we're going to get rid of the year, which was coming from order date. And then over here, I'm going to go into the ship date table and grab the calendar year from there. So we'll drag it up here, drop it right on the rows, zoom back out, and immediately we see the difference. For 2005, we had 3.26 million in sales that were ordered in 2005. For 2005 over here, we had 3.1 million that was shipped in 2005. This is awesome. This is a quick and easy way to kind of solve this problem. This is the first method. The second method, and we'll go ahead and just um, delete this table for now. The second method and the other way of really handling this situation in Power BI has been to create an inactive relationship between two tables. Now, you'll notice that my inactive relationship between my date order table over to my internet sales table is on the ship date. This is pretty cool. So I have one that's on the order date. That's the active. That's what all default filtering is going to do. But then we have an inactive filter. And so once you build that inactive relationship, the next step is we go and write a DAX calculation, a calculated measure with calculate that's going to change that relationship, right? So let's go back over here real quick, back to the report view again, 
and we are going to jump right in and take a look at total sales ship date. And then if we zoom in on the calculation, we'll notice that our total sales ship date, so it's based on the shipping date, we're going to use calculate to return the total sales using this relationship, which is the date table or the date column from our date table to the ship date in our internet sales table. Now, this is, like I said, the second traditional way of handling this. The problem with this method, let's first take a look at the result, right? So we're going to get rid of profit out of this table and we'll bring in our new measure. This is pretty awesome. This has some great analytical value. You can look at the two different metrics side by side in the same table. We can build additional measures on top of this. Uh, and you can clearly see the difference and it's, it's denoted by the name. Now, the problem with this and why a lot of people don't choose this method over importing tables multiple times is because if you use this method and you have 50 measures, you're going to recreate 50 measures. And then if you had to do it for your due date, you'd recreate those 50 measures again. So now you have 50 measures and you have a hundred, you know, you go to a hundred, then you go to 150. If you have a hundred, it's even more. So it's a lot more administration and a lot more management. But what if? We could create one measure to rule them all. This is awesome. Maybe you're familiar with calculation groups in Power BI. Maybe you're not. It's a relatively new feature. I'm not going to go through all of the details here, but I will talk about a couple of things. Let's talk about how we can create one calculated measure that's going to work for total sales, profit, profit margin, everything. All right. So the way that we do that is leveraging external tools. If you want to take advantage of this, you want to go to SQLBI.com, go to Tools, download the Tabular Editor. The other thing that you need to do, so there's a couple of prerequisites, right? The other thing that we need to do here is we're going to go into our Options and Settings, and then in Options, we're going to go turn on a preview feature. And I think it's called Enhanced Metadata. It's, it's a long sentence. It's a mouthful. So we'll just go right in here to our preview features and take a look stored data sets using enhanced metadata format that has to be enabled as well now when i went through setting up the external tools for this i didn't have any problems i installed tabular editor i turned on the preview feature i closed out power bi i opened it back up everything ran i have heard that some people have had problems with this so i think guy in a cube has uh, a video out there of course they got videos on pretty much everything has a video out there that'll walk you through if you run into a roadblock on kind of how you can troubleshoot that so i would recommend that and if I can, I'll try to find it and put it in the notes below the video so you don't have to go digging for it. So we'll see what we can do with that. Now, we've turned that on. We're good to go. How do we create one measure to rule them all? Here's what we do. Under External Tools, I'm going to launch the Tabular Editor. Once again, you have to download this. Go to SQLBI.com forward slash tools, I think it is, and you can bring this in. Now, once the Tabular Editor launches, we're going to create a new calculation group. So I right click on the model, create new calculation group. We're going to give this a name. We can name it pretty much whatever we want. Of course, this is going to show up as a table in your data model. So I'm just going to call this something like, uh, you know, measures by ship date. All right. And so that's going to be the name of our table or our calculation group. And then we're going to create a new calculation item. This is actually going to be that one calculation to rule them all. Now, a lot of people will come in here and create what's called a current measure, and you'll see why that's important in a minute. I'm going to skip that step for now. I'm just going to jump right in and say, you know, measure by ship date. So something about like that and hit enter. So we've given it a name. This is the column name of your table that shows up in your uh, field section, in your field section for a visualization. So you can give that a name here as well. So if we want to name that something real quick, just my column name, that way you guys will see where it is. You name it accordingly for your situation. And then we're going to go back to our measure and let's talk about how we can create one measure to rule them all. We're going to use calculate just like we did in our measure before. And then I am going to tell it the measure that we want to use for this calculation. And we're actually going to use selected measure, right? So selected measure is pretty smart. It's able to identify whatever measures also exist in that visualization and it pulls it right into this. So if it's total sales, it returns total sales. If it's profit, it's profit. You get the, you get the drill. Next, I'm going to tell it our calculation. So we're going to say use relationship. You may notice as I'm walking through this that there really is not any IntelliSense in here yet. 
not that I've been able to kind of play around with, but instead of trying to type it out, right, in case I get it wrong, I'm going to tell it that I want to use a relationship from my internet sales table, and that's going to be on the ship date. So let's grab the ship date there, drop it right there, and then I'm going to hit a comma, and then we're going to go back over to our order date table. I know it seems odd that I'm talking about the order date table, but we're going to go back to our order date table. We're going to grab the date and we're going to bring it over. And so what we're saying is, look, we've created an inactive relationship. We want to use that inactive relationship. And this is us telling calculate to go ahead and use it. Now, it's important to point out that use relationship is not a function that creates a relationship. You have to create, you must create that inactive relationship first in Power BI, either through manage relationships or in the model view then you can leverage that relationship in your calculations. This is pretty cool though, because this one measure is gonna work for all of them, as you're about to see here in just a moment. So what do we do next? Well, up here at the very top, we need to save our changes to the connected database, which is of course that Power BI model that we launched the tabular editor with. So there's a connection that currently exists there. And then as soon as it gets done, we're gonna flip back over to Power BI, it says, you have to go ahead and refresh your calculation groups. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And then so that we can see this kind of side by side, just like before, I am going to, we're going to do some work. So let's add in a couple of different measures here. I really want you to see how cool this is. All right. So we have total sales. We're going to add in total cost, profit, profit margin, a running total all time. And then let's say total transactions and year-to-date sales. Now all of this, right? All of these measures are, these are our measures within the filter context for the year that the order took place. Not the ship date, not the due date. But we're gonna solve that problem right now by making a copy of this table. There we go. And all we have to do is find our new table that we just created, that measure group that calculation group right here. I'm going to expand it and here's that column name. So like I said, give that something intuitive, give it something smart. I'm going to drag that right over here and drop it in the column section of my matrix and watch what happens. It's going to fail. Why did it fail? I probably did not have enough closing parentheses. That's what it was. All right. We're going to fix that. So I only have one closing parenthesis. We're going to close it again. As you can tell, I knew exactly what that was because I've made that mistake before. And we're going to save it. We're going to refresh it. And we're going to go at it again. So when at first you don't succeed, try, try again. All right. Data model is refreshed. Let's take a look at this goodness here. So we have up at the top, our original filter context, which is based on the order date because that's the active relationship. Total sales, 3.26 million. Total sales, 3.1, right? Let's zoom in a little bit, get a closer look here. Cost, 1.9 for 2005, 1.8. Profit, 1.2, 1.3. You see the difference here, one measure. And every selected measure in this table is now being reflected on the shipping date instead of the order date. Our profit margin is different. Our running total is different. Our total transactions are different. Our year-to-date sales are different. This is amazing. One measure, it works for time intelligence. It works for my custom-built rolling total. It works for all of my measures, profit margin, profit sales, all of them. If you haven't explored calculation groups yet, you're missing out because you can use calculation groups for your time series analysis maybe something like year to date sales and you have year to date and then year to date works for your profit, your sales, your margin. So you don't have to create, you know, 10 different copies of year to date for every measure you have. You create one measure and it works for all of them. This is game changing. This is huge. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did hit like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. There's going to be a lot more of them coming out. So make sure you subscribe. See you then.